One of the things we hear a lot is, especially like when it comes to feminism, especially black feminism. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the reason we like this is because grandpa treated grandma so bad and my mm -hmm. da uh, uh, dad treated mom so bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those women didn't have a voice. Those women didn't, uh, they got cheated on all the time, this, this, and that. One of the best rebuttals I've heard is, yeah, you think grandma was a saint or you think mom was a saint, mm -hmm. but dad was raising kids that weren't even his type shit. Mm -hmm. So talk about your situation right. and how it shaped your understanding of the black family dynamic, the, the good, the bad, the ugly. Okay, so my dad, Michael Miller, may he rest in peace. Um, he was, to me, the ideal black man, bro. Because um, me being a man right now, I look back on some of the decisions he made for me and my brother, who isn't his children, and I say, yo, dude, you was the GOAT. You understand what I'm saying? Because I can't imagine myself taking care of another man's child and loving them to the extent that my dad loved me. I call him my dad because he was my dad. He knew me since I was two weeks old. Yeah, he met my mother when I was two weeks old. So when he met my mom, he asked if she had kids. She said, yeah, I got a four-year-old and, and I got a four. He said the ages, he, she said four and two. I don't know why she said four and two, but she met four years old. He, I was two weeks. So from day one, bro, like even from all of the stories I heard from my mom, he took us in and he loved us as his own, bro. Like there was never a doubt in my mind. You know what I'm saying? And um, he helped shape me, you know what I'm saying? Because he was such of a positive role model, bro. You know what I'm saying? My, my sister was his real child. And I saw how hard that he fought to have a sister with, um, excuse me, to have a relationship with my sister. Because, you know, my mom had, for some reason, bro, pulled the child support in and that tore the family up and he didn't deserve it. Because one thing about me, I was always, uh, I always paid attention to stuff. I was a very quiet kid. I, used, I said my first sentence when I was six years old, but I knew how to talk. I was just very observant. I'll just look and stare at something and figure it out for myself. And from a young age, I understood, bro, like, I never seen my mom with a job. My dad always had a job. So I always was able to rationalize and put stuff together that, ooh, I know who's taking care of us financially. You know what I'm saying? As a kid, that's probably none of my business, but I was always able to put that together, you know? So when the child support stuff and stuff started coming in and, you know, women have to lie sometimes to get their way, I always knew it was cat. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, dang, my dad going through the works and my little sister, she being manipulated because she has no, she, she has no other recollection of what's going on other than what her mommy's telling her. And for clarity, you talking about your stepdad? My stepdad, yeah. My stepdad, yeah, was being a great father to me, my older brother, which aren't his kids, and my little sister, which was his child. You understand what I'm saying? But um, long story short, the relationship was broke up between my dad and my sister. Because when child support came in and the courts came in visitation, girl, the, my, my sister got brainwashed and manipulated. Now she hates her dad for reasons that's not even true. Because she got a, a person telling her, oh, your dad never loved you. She never did. He never did nothing for you. And da, 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 da. And look, I got to go to court all day and look at all these papers and stuff like that. So the little girl wound up hating her dad for no reason. And he was the one supporting us our whole life. So... I was living with my mom up to the age 13, wound up going to stay with my dad. And I asked him about like, you know, the experience, you know what I'm saying? And that dude broke down crying, telling me, you know what I'm saying? Showed me receipts, $80,000 here, $40,000 here. I'm talking about per year, bro. Paying all of this money. And I, one thing I could never actually understand was, how's my mom going on all these trips? She ain't got no job. She used to go on mad trips, bro. The best furniture was in our apartments. I never really thought about that part. And then he showed me those receipts. And I was like, dang, bro, you was funding her going on vacation this whole time. And all the clothes that she buying for Denisha. Me and my brother struggling. We ain't got nothing to wear. 
I guess that's why when I finally got some, get some sneakers out there, I could meet a girl. I didn't have much growing up, but I, we watched my sister have the world because she was getting those child support checks. She wasn't supporting me and my brother with it. We just lived there sometimes with it. You understand what I'm saying? But um, when I went over to my dad's house, man, it wasn't to spoil me. You know what I'm saying? It, it was to help mold me into a better individual. My brother had already turned his life to the streets and he ain't want to see me with doing that. You know what I'm saying? So his thing was, yo, I got Jimmy here. I got you. You my son. I love you. He used to tell me that all the time, bro. Like, hearing I love you from a parent, it was like so new to me, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? So my dad was my best friend, bro, to the day he passed away. You know what I'm saying? And he helped me become the father I am today and kind of the husband I am today. He was never a husband, but he had values. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I follow Muhammad. I do it a lot. Yeah. What was slash did you have a relationship with your biological father? What was what? Say that more? Did you have a relationship with your biological father? Don't know who he is. Wow. Yeah, never met him. I got a middle name of a man that my mother once told me was my biological father. But then as I was living with my stepdad, which is I call him my dad, literally his next door neighbor, his name is Corey, he noticed me. And he was like, yo, your mother named Putin? I'm like, yeah, that's her, that's her street name or whatever. He's like, bro, come over here, take a walk with me. His name was Corey. Like we used to play basketball with him and everything. I'm walking with him. He's like, yo, look, you ever heard of a dude named Greg? I'm like, yeah. He's like, that's your father. I'm like, yo, how you know about Greg? He said, that's my brother. He's like, I was around the day he was born. I'm like, what? Mind you, I've been living here for three years. Right, right, right. He's literally my next door neighbor, the house right next to us. For this, after you left, this after you left your mom's house? After I left so my you were like 15 now, at this time? I'm about, yeah, 15. Yep. This is right before I met Jaleesa. Probably the same year. Um... And I got that news broke to me, bro. That some guy named Greg, you know what I'm saying? That And he has the proof that like, yeah, I was there and everything. Greg is my brother and all this other type of stuff. And my best friend lived, he was he was the guy right there next door to me. So my best friend wound up being potentially my blood cousin. Shout out to Kool. Woo! So yeah, that was, that, was, that was a tough pill to swallow. So, you know, of course I went to my dad. I asked him like, Yo, you heard about this Greg dude? He's like, y'all know Greg, man. Like, Back when I first met your mom, he came over, he seen me with your mother and said, oh, that's not my son no more. So he calls, he calls Greg Skeletor. He says, so I told Skeletor, you don't got to worry about him. That's my son now. And that was the last time Greg was there. Yeah, you don't got to worry about him. You, jealous, you mad because she moved on to another man. You ain't even, don't worry, that's my, that's my boy now. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so, so, man, this is, wow. Yeah. So... A lot of dudes who have stories similar to yours, mm -hmm. you know, because a, a lot of times I think as a community, we over talk about toxic fathers. Mm. We don't talk enough about toxic mothers. Mm. And it's a lot of dudes who have and grew up with toxic mothers, a lot of women too. Yeah. And it shapes their view of women. Mm. But in your situation, you still had a reverence, you still had a respect. So how, how did your relationship with your mother and who she was affect you as a boy into, into manhood? Um, I don't think it was too healthy witnessing what I did with this because I was able to realize at a very young age that women lie. And growing up, you are to believe that what women say is true. If a woman tells you she was assaulted, believe her. No matter what, because she's the victim. She's the weaker being. Believe her. I grew up with the exact opposite. If I hear a woman was assaulted, let's do some research. Let's get some proof. Let's not just believe what's coming out of her mouth because she has the capability to lie. Now, if we get this, we, we, we dig into it and, and everything lines up, then I, that wasn't cap. You know what? We got you. But I never just took to it just because a woman, just because it's word of a woman. And even with men, if a man tells me something and it don't make sense, stuff just don't line up, bro, I don't believe you until it makes sense. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I don't know if it's like trust issues, but um, I don't think it was healthy for me to witness those things because I, I, I want to, you know, be more sympathetic with women. But when I see them have some of those characteristics that my mom has, it's like, not that I dislike you or anything, but 
I got to dig a little deeper into you. I can't just take your word off top because I've literally seen the word of a woman tarnish the relationship between my little sister and her loving father. And I felt bad for my father to the day he died because all he wanted to do was love his daughter. He died yearning the love from his daughter, bro. My little sister spit in his face at a visitation visit. And, and that, that, that didn't just hurt him, but it hurt the people around him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. It's, it's young dudes watching this right now. They might, they might have similar situations. They might have different situations. What game do you have based on, based on like your real world raw understanding of women from your experiences and your mom? What, what piece of game would you have for them to, to better understand how to navigate women? Um, don't be naive, but try to not be an asshole at the same time. There's a thin line between it. You understand what I'm saying? Between being naive and saying, you know what? I don't believe nothing. No matter what you say, I just, it's cap. You a hoe, you a this, you a that. Give, give some leeway. There's opportunity there. Now, the reason why you might have trust issues with women might be because of your experience with your mom. But you got to understand, these women ain't your mom. You know? So take some of your lessons learned and apply it to dating, but don't let it be detrimental to your dating experiences. You understand what I'm saying? So it's really, it's really tough because it's a mind battle. You have to battle your mind in order to have a successful relationship. When you've been through traumatic experiences with a woman, with anybody really. But since we're talking about women, we're gonna highlight with women. So that's the toughest part, battling your 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 initial and your net, your natural thought patterns, and that is also the secret to a successful relationship on both ends, because we all have different upbringings. You understand what I'm saying? I was taught to be a different x well a certain way. She was taught to be a certain way. Those certain ways aren't the same certain ways. So in order for her certain way and your certain way to come together, you got to cut her certain way in half, cut your certain way in half, and bring those halves together, boom. Now you got a half of a unique certain way. You understand what I'm saying? Because now you have an understanding of some ways how you think and you understand some ways that I think. What am I willing to compromise mentally to make this relationship work? How am I going to make our certain way the best certain way? How are you willing to compromise your certain way to make our certain way the best certain way? And that's, that's the key to it, bro. It's hard. Relationships aren't easy. And that's why most people aren't in them. Because who wants to do the hard thing? Who wants to do the hard thing? But one thing that I've learned as a child growing up is... Harder to do the hard thing, but people that do the hard thing get more respect. Think about it. You played Tomb Raider before, right? Okay. Imagine you got a name, guy named Convo, right? And a guy named Alan, right? Convo beat Tomb Raider on super easy mode in like three days, right? Alan beat Tomb Raider on super hard mode in five days. Who you respect more? Who got more skills? But a lot of people aren't like Alan because Alan was willing to endure all of those failures because he didn't fail missions at least 40 to 50 times. He wanted to throw his controller. He wanted to turn the game off. But he endured it and got through it. See, Convo, Convo didn't have that mental capacity. He don't like the word mission failed. He don't like seeing it. So he go the easy route. 
I'm going to do it on Super Easy. Just say I completed it. Just to say that I done beat it. I want to go to school and brag. But if you compare Convo to Allen, Allen's experience is way more respected than Convo's, even though Convo completed it in an earlier stage. Convo completed it in three days. It took him five. But he did it the hard way. And relationships are hard. And that's why most people don't want to. It's easy to say, all right, it's over. Next. Move on to the next one. That's the easy thing. But that's why people talk to people like me and Jaleesa. We've been together for 18 years. How did y'all do that? Because that's what that's what Convo going to ask Alan. Yo, how you beat that Jordan Homo, bro? Them Tigers kept eating my ass up on level two. Now he got some game for me. And I'm, I might go back. I might not can't do it on very hard, but I might be able to do it on medium, though. And once I reach medium, I might want to get to that very hard one day. That might be the goal. Facts. Yeah. You, you mentioned um, child support, family court, divorce, things like that. When you watch people like Fresh and Fit, we were talking about them mm -hmm. earlier. A lot of the, the, you know, the game we're seeing come out of like the red pill spaces. Yeah. Yo, bro, don't even get me. Bro, right, it ain't right. even worth it. It's it's a lot more at stake. It's a lot more to potentially lose than it, there is to gain, especially in a modern context in the United States. What's your philosophy on that, man? Um, guys out there that's tuning into the red pill, um, part of the uh, internet. If you don't line up with those high value men that's out there, those six figures. Don't take what they say and run with it. Those guys live a different lifestyle. Um, and they have a different reality. You know what I'm saying? I made up something called the median man. You understand what I'm saying? And the median woman. We are middle ground people. Most of their... Um, audience are median people, bro. Facts. Their audience isn't the guys that's making six figures, getting all the girls and all that. They not worried about what French is saying. They already in the game. Right. They got us. We are the ones tuning in. But the information is misleading when it's promoted to the wrong group. Now, my advice to the median man, to the median woman, date to marry. Date to marry. She a divorce you, bro. What are you making? Sixty thousand dollars a year. I'm not trying to disrespect you, because I don't make the most money in the world either. What's she taking, bro? Take a chance if that's what you want. Marriage is a chance, bro, and it's it's about fighting. You got to fight for it sometimes, because you're combining two different worlds. You understand what I'm saying? So you can't. You can't, you can't just go into a situation knowing that times could get hard. They say it at the altar for better or for worse. They say that for worse part for a reason, richer or for poor, for a reason. So you can't just go into a relationship or marriage and think it's just for richer and for better. You can't forget about the bad parts. They're going to happen. So now are you resilient enough? How strong is your love for this person? Are you resilient enough to fight through that hard stuff? Or are you the person that fights on easy mode? Do you want to go on easy mode and take the easy way out? Yeah, you know what? I don't want to lose. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go through that, so I'm just not going to do it. All right, then what you going to do? You going to tune into my podcast and ask Convo, how you do it, bro? Bro, I was able to, I, I made the decision to want this because I believe in family. Marriage isn't just about me and my wife. It's about my children. It's about my children's children. When I marry, to, to marry, you, you don't just get married in holy matrimony. To marry something is to bring together. Okay? So when I married this girl, you know what I also married? Her mama, her daddy, her sisters, her brothers, her friends. I married everything about her. She married everything that comes with me, my family, my friends. Shit, if I got some ops, she married, she, she, she got an op now. Because our world is together now. Now, 
the game I got for that, bro, or sis, if you want to get into that lifestyle, go ahead. And it's not, it's not scary. It's scary when you start thinking about the negatives. You have to think about the positives. Once you start thinking about negatives and, oh, I got to put this in play just in case the relationship breaks up. Or I got to have this girl on the side just in case my wife want to leave and I could just go to her. Nope, you're already divorced. The moment you think of a way out, you will find a way out subconsciously. Stop having them secret bank accounts that she don't know about just in case whatever. Because you know why? You will revert to that secret bank account because now you don't need her as much now. Stop having that girl on the side just in case she don't work. Because now, in some case, she going to piss you off and you know what you're going to say? Man, I don't got to make things better in my marriage. I got Stacy over here I can go holler at. You just playing on easy mode, bro. Marriage ain't about easy mode. Marriage is about hard mode, bro. When it's time to get hard. And what I see a lot of people in relationships do, they take those hard times and they equate it with the majority of their year. Let me explain on that. Me and my wife argue. Yes, we argue, bro. And one of the things that she likes to say is, I'm done. I'm tired of this. I go through this every day. And I have to sit her back like Jaleesa. You, went through, you, go, you go through this every day? We argue every day? We was at Applebee's yesterday loving each other. And then we were somewhere else loving each other as well. Every day means 365 days a year. Now, if we have four arguments in one year, there's 365 days. Four arguments that you feel is the worst thing that happened to you. Do you really think that that's worth breaking up a family, a bond, a togetherness that we've built 18 years. You think four days out of 365 days is worth that? Because while you're going through it, you feel like it's most of your marriage? Mm -mm. The thing about it is some people take hardships and it's too much for them. And it's overwhelming. So when they go through it, it's like the end of the world. I don't know what to do. Uh, uh, run. Pew. Easy route. Easy route, bro. And that's why every relationship requires at least one resilient person. At least one resilient person. Now, you know if the person you in this marriage is not going to work out. Y'all done tried everything. Y'all done been through all of the therapy, which I don't believe in. Um, and the, the advice. You done watched the We Need to Talk podcast, both of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and it, there's no, no, no information out there that could just make this better. And y'all just vomit damn near every time you sleep in the same bed. All right, fine, bro. It's probably time to, you know what I'm saying? But if you have something there and it's stuff worth fighting for, then fight for it, man. Yeah. That's real. That's my take on that. That's real. Mm-hmm.